Hi everyone, I'm Andy Neal and this is an In-N-Out tutorial for Motion. Now when I animate in Motion, most times I try to use behaviors because most times they're just the simplest and easiest way to animate layers. But there are many times when it makes more sense to use keyframes. And with how sophisticated the motion behaviors are, it's kind of easy to overlook just how versatile keyframing is. I'm going to start with a basic project here with three shape layers that I created. I have a square, a circle, and a diamond. I've uploaded a copy of the project that you can download on the title page for this tutorial so that you can play along. Now, I've already animated all three layers, as you can see when I play in my mini timeline. Select the rectangle layer and go to the Properties tab in the Inspector. You can hit F1 if you want. Here, you can easily see what parameters are keyframed because they're shown in red. In this case, I animated the scale parameter. This also means that if I make any more adjustments to this layer at any point in my project, Motion is going to set another keyframe and animate to that new value. Select the circle layer. Here, I animated the position parameter. And the same is true of the diamond layer. What I'd like to do now is animate a little rotation to go along with my existing diamond layer animation. I'm going to hit Shift-I to go to the first frame of my layer. Here you can see that the keyframe indicator is orange, which is letting me know that there's a keyframe set on this frame. I can also jump from keyframe to keyframe by clicking these little arrows on either side of the keyframe indicator. Another method is to use Shift-K to jump to the next keyframe and Option-K to jump to the previous keyframe. Okay, so I'm just going to hit Shift-I again to go to the first frame of this layer. And I'm just going to click here in the rotation to set a keyframe. Then I'm going to hit Shift-K twice to jump to this keyframe where the diamond hits the bottom of my uh, viewer window. And I'll scrub in the rotation value to about negative 90 degrees. Then jump forward two more keyframes and change the value to negative 180. Then jump to the last keyframe and change the value to about negative 540. When I play, you can see how I now have a diamond layer spinning as it falls and rolls off the frame. Okay, now I like this animation, but maybe it could be a little faster. Luckily, there's a way to do this without having to manually adjust each and every keyframe. First, I need to make sure that the keyframes for all of my animated layers are visible in the keyframe editor. Hit Command-8 to open your keyframe editor. If you don't have any layers selected in your layers pane, you won't see anything in the keyframe editor. This is actually a good thing because when you have a lot of complicated moves on many layers, it can get messy fast as far as like how the keyframes display. So it's helpful to only see keyframes for what you want to work on. Select the rectangle layer, and now the keyframes I set for this layer are visible. If you don't see anything in your project, make sure that this View tab is set to Animated, so that it's showing all of the animated keyframes for this layer. Select the other two layers as well, and notice that their keyframes are now visible in the editor too. Click this little magnifying glass twice to make sure that your keyframes are fit to the viewer. And then you can also zoom in by dragging on this little slider or using this zoom slider over here. Once you have a good view of your keyframes, click on this icon to select what's called the Transform Keyframes tool. Lasso all the keyframes. This is going to put a transform box around your keyframes. Grab the edge of the box by this control point here and drag a little bit to the left. What this does is it shrinks the distance between keyframes relative to each other. So I can retain the essence of my animation, but it's going to make it faster overall. If I want to make the animation slower, I drag to the right and it's going to slow everything down. But I think in this case, I'm going to want it to go a little faster. When you're done, just click the arrow selection tool and then click anywhere in an empty spot to deselect everything. One thing I noticed, if I select, say, just the diamond layer, is that the first keyframe in the animation is now starting before the first frame of the layer. This means that we're going to have to adjust the endpoint for our circle and diamond layers so that it matches with our faster animation. Hold Command down and add the circle layer to our selection. Scrub to where you can see the rectangle layer at its highest point in the animation. 
because that's where I want the circle and diamond layers to appear. Find that spot and hit I on the keyboard to adjust the endpoint for those layers. This is just to show you that keyframes are not tied to a layer's in and out points. You can have keyframes come before a layer's in point and also after its out point. Now let's suppose that you want to repeat this animation a little further down on your timeline. For example, at the 3 second mark, you'd like the exact same animation to occur. Use the regular selection tool and then lasso all your keyframes in the keyframe editor. Hit Command C to copy them to your clipboard. Zoom out a bit in the editor so that you can see a little bit more of your project. Then advance to the 3 second mark and hit Command V to paste. Okay. Well, that didn't go quite as planned. I mean, it did paste the keyframes, and if you play from uh, around three seconds on, it's going to look pretty close to right. But there are two big problems with it. The first is that the circle and diamond animations do a sort of a rewind to get back to their starting positions before they animate normally. This is definitely not the kind of animation that I'm looking for. And the second problem is that I somehow missed copying the animation for my rectangle layer. You see, I had forgotten to reselect it in the layers pane after I had fixed the circle and diamonds endpoints. Hit Command Z to undo. Let's deal with the second problem first. We have to make sure that we select all the keyframes in our animation if we're going to be copying and pasting. But remember that the keyframe editor will only show us the keyframes for selected layers unless we make a curve set. Now the best way to describe a curve set is that it's a group of parameters that you want to save together so that you can easily select them all with one click. In our case, we have animations from three separate layers that we want to save and come back to. To save a curve set, you first need to select all of the parameters that you want to save. Make sure that you have all three shape layers selected in the layers pane. Then in the keyframe editor, you can see all the parameters that have been animated for each layer. Click this drop down box and choose New Curve and give it a name. I'm going to call it Three Layer Animation. Hit Return or click OK. Now, if I deselect all of my layers, you'll see that I can still see all the keyframes that are in my curve set. Click the drop down and choose Animate again. With this view, if there's no layer selected in the Layers pane, the keyframe editor is empty. But if I choose my three layer animation curve set from the drop down, I get my animated keyframes back. And I don't have to remember to select the proper layers. They're just going to be there. To deal with that weird little reverse animation that we have, we're going to need to set placeholder keyframes. In the keyframe editor, lasso all of our keyframes again. Hit Command C to copy them to the clipboard. Then move the playhead to 229. You can just double click in the time index and type 229 to jump the playhead to that frame. Since all the parameters are still selected, click the keyframe button on any one of them to set a placeholder keyframe for all of them. Move forward one frame to the three second mark and hit Command V to paste your keyframes. Drag out your play range and then play it to see how it works. Well, this is immediately this is better, but it's still not right. The problem I have now is that the circle and diamond layers start their animation before the rectangle does its little bounce animation. This is because the rectangle layer has a keyframe that starts on the very first frame of our project, but the circle and diamond layers don't have their first keyframe until frame six. When we do a straight copy and paste, Motion lines up the first keyframes of every layer instead of respecting their relationship to each other. It's okay though, this is uh, pretty simple to fix. Scroll forward with the playhead until the rectangle animates to its highest point. Uncheck the box next to the word rectangle in the keyframe editor. This is going to temporarily hide the keyframes for that layer. Now we can easily lasso all of the circle and diamond keyframes. Click on one of them and hold shift to then move and shift all these keyframes to the right without changing their values. Recheck the rectangle layer so that we can now see those keyframes again and hit play. Okay, there we go. 
Now, if we say wanted to repeat this animation more than once, there's another way that we can go about it that's even easier than copying and pasting. Lasso the second set of keyframes and hit delete. Once again, we need to start with a placeholder keyframe, but this time our placeholder is going to be at the point where we want the animation to repeat. So move the playhead to the three second mark, and since all of our parameters are still selected, we can click the keyframe button to set a placeholder for all the parameters. Now, based on our last attempt at this, we know already that the circle and diamond layers animation needs to start six frames later than the rectangle animation, so move the playhead to 306. I could do what I did before, but I want to show you something else. Hit Command 7 on the keyboard to open up the timeline. This gives you a view where you can see both your normal timeline view and the keyframe editor at the same time. If you're tight for space, you can resize this window and make the canvas smaller temporarily. Go ahead and organize the view so that you can see the circle and diamond layers, and then click this icon here if it's not already active. This is the Show Keyframes button. Notice how there are several keyframes in the editor at this point in time, but only one in the timeline for each of the diamond and circle layers. You see, this keyframe in the timeline is like a group that contains every keyframe for this layer that is at this point in time. So if I select it and move it, I can move all of a layer's keyframes at once. So I'm just going to select the one for the diamond layer, then hold down command and select the one for the circle layer, and then slide them over until they are at 306. Okay, now we're almost done. In the keyframe editor, select one parameter, then hit Command A to select all of the other parameters. Click the animation menu for one of the parameters and go to After Last Keyframe. Choose Repeat. This is going to tell Motion to repeat the existing keyframes for a layer continuously for as long as you make the layer. In fact, if you zoom out in the keyframe editor here, you can see by looking at the dashed line of animation that those keyframes have been repeated three times in our 10 second project. And if I decided to make that project longer than 10 seconds, those keyframes would continue repeating. This is a really great trick for repetitive animations. There you have it, some advanced keyframing techniques to make your animations go a little easier. I'm Andy Neal, and this was an in and out tutorial for motion.